Hello ladies and gentlemen. So this video has been a long time coming because I had promised that I would explain how to use Orange for data mining. I then tried to apply that to COVID-19 data and it turned out not easy that I'm going to explain. Before anything else, I thought I would give you a quick visit of the Orange data mining software. It is made by a lab in Slovenia. As you can see, you can get hold of the software. It's running on the old laptop that I'm doing this recording in, so it will work for you at home. There's also plenty of good information. Don't pass the opportunity of receiving tutorials in your email when you download and install it. They also have some excellent videos. I will put links from the description. I don't want to repeat badly what they've already done really well. Now, once you install the software, uh, here I installed it via this tool called Anaconda that gathers a number of different tools that all use common Python libraries. There's Orange. Uh, I've already launched it, so I'm not going to press this and instead open it here. And I've opened and preloaded a few things, as you can see. But for a moment, we're going to ignore the little bubbles already in there and load some new information. The idea of Orange is that we can load files and then process them by doing things to them, like seeing the data that is in them. Each new widget I drag in, as you can see, is there to either load or save or process data and each one can be connected to the others in various uh, in various ways i say that load a file but i'm not loading anything here so i've got something ready made to decide what file this is let's open this up there's a space for either loading pre-existing things or a url and since we have the john hopkins data for covid19 I'm going to load this data from the GitHub repository, which of course is the latest data on it. So copy that. Let's put it in a URL here. Save. Let's minimize this so I can quickly get to the result. When I press reload, the data will be loaded. I read here that I have a series of columns for latitude and longitude of each country, region that we're storing data about, and how many confirmed cases we have on the 22nd of January, on the 23rd, 24th, 25th of January, and so on, yeah, all the way to today, which is the 8th of April. And then there is text for province or the state that we're talking about, and for the country. Let's close that. And now the data has been loaded and, and this line isn't dotted anymore. We can actually see the data there as a table. I can actually select things like this. I can also uh, press here and order it uh, by number of people who were already infected on the 21st of January. You can see at the bottom here, 444 cases, that's the province of Hubei in China. But if it's just to view it like this, I might as well use a spreadsheet. We're going to have all sorts of interesting things. First of these that I'm going to show you is uh, an explanation that is already there on the blog on the COVID-19 data on the Orange website. If we get hold of the section on visualizing, there it is there is the possibility of seeing a line plot. So I should be able to actually take my data and feed it to line plot and see a line plot. There's the line plot, I suppose. It's looking a bit gray, but you know, we got that quick. And I'm going to exploit the fact that these, this line plot can actually output, let's see what it can output. It can output data, so the same data we had to start with, but also something that says selected data. In other words, if I open this and select some of the data like this, then the three selected lines become a set of 
selected data and I can feed that selected data to the table selected data becomes data no uh, I can't do much else okay I'm going to remove this data link there the three things that I had selected were Italy Spain and the United States who would have thunk it let's bring them together the line plot and the visualization if I select this thing it's China it's the province of Hubei in China and what about those few are they there's quite a few I think yeah they are countries that haven't reached a high level of infection yet states of Australia and various others but I selected quite a lot at once there so I've got quite a lot of places I need a bigger screen or a bigger record on my camera to be able to show you all of this Uh, let's exploit this in a slightly different way still among other things here I can actually I've got a geographical thing which I imported in because it's not there when you first install orange uh, and it offers the possibility of a map there's the map looking good with nothing on it wait I need to feed data into the map and there's all the different spots in the data that I had to start with, I had longitude and latitude. So the system exploited longitude and latitude to actually place things correctly on the map. I can also size the dots. Uh, no, there's not much value in coloring them, but I can size the dots according to how many cases we have got. I could uh, pick up there. there. So the, the bigger dots, let's enlarge them a bit. The bigger dots are the ones that give us more cases and through the map I can actually select data so here I'm selecting regions around the British Isles I think the little dot between the other two is the Isle of Man and I can feed that into data here Ireland, UK and Isle of Man or I can also feed that into the line plot uh, let's shift this somewhere I want to be able to see this clearly okay now if I look at the line plot and in the line plot I put it side by side with the world map I can select it and things in the world map let's select countries of Europe there you can include it then I can actually see on the lines there where those countries of Europe are compared to the rest of the world and you can see what the World Health Organization was telling us which is that after China, Europe is now the, the new heart of the infection. If you wonder where specifically is the UK, there we are. The UK is the bigger one. There's more cases in the UK than in the Isle of Man or Ireland, unsurprisingly. Okay, so that's some simple uses of Orange. I wanted to show more and do more. I needed to actually process my data. So have a look again at the information we've got in there. There's each country and then how many people are infected on successive days. A long series of uh, a long series of columns. But this isn't very convenient data, especially if I want to, for example, recalculate what this is in proportion of population or if I wanted to carry out some other analysis like this. Data mining 
involves a mixture of trial and error view visualizations and of applications of mathematics and to apply the maths I need to be able to have this data not as one column per day but as one column that shows the day and another that shows the number of corresponding number of cases there isn't an easy way to do this in orange so I wrote a Python script I'm not going to explain the detail here there's too much code I'm going to share the code instead and it is commented. The Python script essentially goes through two loops, outer loop, inner loop, to go through each of the columns and each of the rows to be able to put that back uh, in the form that I'm looking for. So I feed this into the script and to be able to see, the script is now running, to be able to see the result of this to feed this into the data the data table is receiving a lot of things here as you can see but actually it's receiving it as one three successive tabs and the one we're interested in is the third tab you know the previous one was the data selected and this one right now we have Afghanistan its latitude and longitude the date that we're talking about and how many cases there were in Afghanistan on 22nd of January, how many cases there were in Afghanistan on 23rd of January, etc. etc. Let's have a look. We've got now 22nd of January many times for each of the country and regions that are listed in my data. So instead of a set of data that has many columns and many rows, we've got a set of data that has far fewer columns with date and confirmed instead of each of the days but a lot more rows so we've removed the, the group of data formed by each of these repeating dates and put it the long way is this better or is it less helpful in some respects it's better and in some respects it's not I was hoping let's detach the line plot from this and attach it to this instead and just try to display this I was hoping to actually display the lines in the same way as before but orange isn't clever enough to magically display the correct lines once we've got the data in in this format that doesn't help Terry me much I might be able to actually pick up a data subset you know like we were doing before so instead of grabbing the data straight from the file I grab the data from outside of the script after we have transformed the file now the script and this file will just work together and I could just get a subset of the data like just around the UK Now I've got less of it to display, but it's still not terribly, uh, not not terribly helpful. So this isn't working. Goodbye. Instead, I'm going to try and apply to it, apply it to this thing called line chart. Now line chart is part of a special series of things called time series. So hopefully it's able to do a good job. But again, line chart did not work with the many countries that were in there. It worked if I did this. I use my data to select one country. And having selected one country, I feed that as one time series. Here I've got three, that's still too many. Let's get just the UK. feed it into the time series 
display the confirmed cases. Ah, colon for the maybe. Yes. I can get individual, I can press add plot and add a few more individual uh, individual cases. So let's see if we can get here the UK and let's zoom. So now if I select my three countries, I can plot three charts. on this scale showing me my confirmed data but you can see it's not a terribly convenient way of showing things try one more there is this thing called a moving transformation a moving transformation smooths what happens over time by making an average i don't want to transform the latitude i want to transform the last of these yeah Transform the number of confirmed cases. Show this one. A forecast will not work, I think. Uh, if I press reset signals, I can tell it to pass the time series. Confirmed. Now we can see that the purple line, the confirmed five mean, which is the moving average, is smoothed out and has a little bit of delay compared to the green bars. The moving average takes the average of the last few values. So here, for example, the moving average is much lower than the actual data for the simple reason that it takes into account the zeros that are there earlier. And it looks like things are ramping up slowly when in reality, well, what we have here is a small number of cases and because of that uh, we have a, a fixed value but moving averages are good when you have data that shifts unreliably over time what we've been able to do by transforming the data in this way let's look at how the data had been transformed by transforming the data in this way having the date and the number of confirmed cases we've been able to actually feed it into the time series analysis tools to be able to carry out things like moving average and display this differently but it's not worked terribly well now i did some more work i applied the same transformation to the number of deaths and the number of recovered uh, cases i merged the data to get a single uh, to get a single table so we're going to do this so that we can have a look at what merge does and then i'll explain why this isn't as productive as i had expected it to be the file for the number of deaths i have to load it again one of the infections of orange is that these urls did not get saved i'm not sure whether it's my lack of knowledge or the tool or whether it is the way that it works. Done. Here. And let's load this one. Done. You know, once that Python script has run here, we've got our data transformed. I used essentially the same Python script here and here and there's this merge now what merge will do let me show you let's remove this so that we can work with just this data table let me show you what this data table looks like compared to this one so this shows the number of confirmed cases per date for each country etc well, this one, it's the number of deaths, but the file has the same structure. And so, display the data. It's the number of deaths per date for each country, etc. Let's get this, this out of the way.
if I merge this data here, the main data will be this one because this is the number of confirmed cases and there could be confirmed cases and no deaths but there could, couldn't be deaths and no confirmed cases. Let's not forget, so here, save it as confirmed cases. And we merge the data together. The machine tells me how do you want to merge and here I have done it before and we will match the rows provided that it is the same country, the same latitude, longitude, region and the same day. So row by row all of this will match and the machine will make the new columns. Again have a check for that data. There's our data again country, region, latitude, longitude, date, number of confirmed cases, number of deaths, question mark, what question mark? Ah, the question marks are probably the situations where there are no known deaths. Yes, in fact, if there are zero confirmed cases, there are zero deaths. Finally, that data that we have merged, we merge again. Quick check for that final data table that shows the number of confirmed, the number of deaths, the number of cases recovered for the different countries. I think some data has got lost. Find matching pairs. And this is attempt append columns for extra from extra data. We're going to do the same here. We're going to append columns from extra data. And that should actually give us more data, yes, because here there are zero confirmed cases in this at this state in this place and no known deaths and no known recovered. We've automatically merged the data from the three files. We could save this table and go and process it somewhere else. Or we could apply to it our tool. So we've obtained quite quickly you know, a new data set that reconciles these things together and we could process this and use it in a new visualization. Now, I ought to comment on the result we're getting. We can actually produce much more interesting results, but the way I organize this data isn't actually best to make it work with Orange. I approached the tool with the mindset of someone who works with relational data. I normalized the data. I produced a table that has the simplest possible set of columns and many rows for what needs to be recorded. But it's not something that works best when we're trying to do some statistics. And particularly with machine learning, it would be more interesting to organize the data in a form that has a set of characteristics, like for example, which country it is, but also when the epidemic started, and a set of features that we can use in some kind of meaningful way. It's not what I've got with my set of dates and the number of confirmed cases. As I was developing the Python script, I went to Stack Overflow to ask how best to do it, one man who actually worked developing Orange, he wrote a blog that explains an alternative way to, of actually wor working with this data. In a future video, I will actually show an alternative way that we can process the data with Orange and more like the techniques of data mining. Meanwhile, I would encourage you to go and try. This is my first try. I learned a lot in the process. There are quite a lot of situations where we can get straight into applying the techniques that you might have heard elsewhere, but are feeling too theoretical until you get a tool like this to carry out analysis quickly and get to results quickly. Thank you. Use the comments to ask any questions and let's continue the discussion in the comments below. Even simply drop a thumbs up to say that uh, you found this helpful. I hope to be releasing more ideas that use observables and JavaScript and that use Orange and Python to show examples of how this work can be done. Meanwhile, stay well and goodbye.